scriptures because they were all capitalized. In fact, the way they did it is each word were not separated by a space. They were all put together. But the thing is, you, so you cannot say, well, little g or big g, that word is one word. But yes, there's no other gods, right? But the thing is that we, what we need to understand that there is a lot of gods out there. And what we mean by that is anything and everything that we put in place of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, anything we put as a priority before the Godhead becomes our God. So what can God mean then? What, what is God? Well, materialism, things, right? The rulers of the land. Even a king, right? How many of those kings, like King Nebuchadnezzar, thought he was so mighty and he got so egotistical and he goes, look what I've done and what I've built and all this and what happened to him? <laughs> Crawling like a beast in the field, eating grass. He was humbled. You think he learned his lesson? What about some people? It's um, a girlfriend or a boyfriend. That's the most important thing in my life. You spend all night thinking about her. You're consumed with the thought of her or him. Then nothing else comes to your mind, not even God the Father. And you're, you just spend every moment thinking about that. That's a God. That's deep. Or maybe even religion. You ever thought about that? There, there's a lot of people that are consumed with church stuff. But yet, they don't know God. You understand what I'm saying? I know. The Pharisees were like that, right? Right. They knew the scriptures. They memorized it backwards and forwards. But what good did that do? Remember what Jesus called them? You hypocrites. You whitewash walls. Oh, man. Can you imagine being a Pharisee and someone calling you a whitewash wall, you hypocrite? Oh, no wonder they wanted to kill Jesus, right? But Jesus was speaking truth. Even though they knew the truth, they didn't see it. They didn't allow the truth to impact their lives and to make changes in the way they lived their lives. And they did not give God the glory for who he was and the whole purpose that he came to the earth. And when he came, they rejected him. The God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God. Jesus is, in the, is the very exact representation of the Father. You see, a lot of people get confused about the relationship of Jesus being God and God the Father being God. And Different cults will say, well, Jesus was not God. Because if he was God the Father, then who was he speaking to in the garden? And they make all kinds of distortions of who Jesus was. But I want you to get this concept too, is that from the very beginning, the book of Genesis, man was made in the imago Deo, imago Dei in the image of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives within you. You have been created in God's image. That's why every single life is important, whether it's still in the womb or not. And no one has the, the business of ending any life whether they be a baby in the womb or a person near death, 
Nobody has the authority to take up a life. But a lot of people play God by doing that. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side. We are not uh, hard-pressed on every side by not crushed, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not abandoned. I think so many times people get this false concept that the life of a Christian is going to be really easy. A cruise. No problems at all. So when they become a Christian and they find out that that's <coughs> not what happens, right? You remember what happened to the other Christians? Burned at the stake, fed to the lions, right? Gladiators, remember? Persecuted, but not abandoned. God was with them through all their trials. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our bodies. For we, are, we who are alive are always been given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal bodies. So then, death is that work in us, but life is that work in you. For it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken, since we have the same spirit of faith. We also believe, and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Although outwardly, and the older we get, the more this is true, outwardly we are wasting away. Our teeth begin to decay. Our hearing, which I forgot my hearing aids this morning. <laughs> Our hearing, ah, we're always going, huh? What? <laughs> our, our hair starts to thin or turn gray. And, and those of us who have had a healthy body in the earlier years, you know, the, maybe you lifted some weights and you got a nice chest. And, you got abs, and all of a sudden everything starts to sag. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Though our we are wasted, we yet inward we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So I think so many times we get so consumed in our bodies, our physical bodies, that we forget what's happening inside of us. That we are being renewed day by day. And soon, and very soon, this earthly body will be transformed. Yeah. We will receive a new body where there's no more hernias, no more headaches, no more sore legs, no, sagging. no diabetes. Can you imagine what's going to happen someday, soon and very soon? It might be sooner than you think. Yep. We don't know when that day is going to come. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory. And it far outweighs. So in contrast to what you're going through right now, the pain, the suffering, is going to be gone forever never to experience pain again. 
to live in the very presence of Almighty God. And when you think of what heaven is going to be like, all of us have our own concept of what we'd like heaven to be. It's going to be thousands of times better than that. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is only temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. First Corinthians 1. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. And I do, again, when, when you read scripture, it's to do proper hermeneutics or how to read the Bible and understand it, you have to ask the question, well, who is he writing to, right? And he's writing to the Corinthian church. Now, where is Corinth? Up in Greece. Right? What were they like before? They were heathens. They were pagans. They were, they, they were involved in a lot of sin. But he says, that's what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose, now get this, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of the world, of this world, and the despised things, and the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness. And redemption, therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, not boast in himself, but boast in the Lord. Because without what the Lord has done for you, you would be nothing. Right? I like that scripture verse from Philippians. I can do all things, all all things to Christ who gives me strength. And what does all mean? All Everything. Everyone. And the, the problem is today we, we believe or we say we believe that verse. But do you really believe in that verse? That God can do a mighty work in your life if you would just submit it all to him. Like that song, the hymn. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Instead, we should be singing, Song to Jesus, I don't surrender. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. In order for us to get from here to there, we have to surrender it all and humble ourselves. And James says, humble yourselves before the Lord and what? He. He's the one that's going to lift you up. When we try to go out there and say, look what I've done, God says, huh, poof. He wants to humble us so that his name will be glorified through us. Ephesians 2, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to, used to, past tense. That's the way you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. And of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now is work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time. Gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following his desires and thoughts. Like the rest we were by nature deserving wrath. What do we deserve? Death. What, what, is the, what is deserving wrath? What, what's the circumstance of deserving wrath? Or where would we be? What is the wages of sin? Death. Yeah. What kind of death? Eternal death. And where do those that are going to experience eternal death going to live? Mm -hmm. This place that we don't even want to, that's a bad word, right? <laughs> we don't even want to say the word. because of his great love for us. God 
It is rich, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ. Even when we were dead in our transgression, it is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Do you get that? That someday we will reign with him forever. In order that in the coming age he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not by works that anyone would be able to boast about. Look what I've done. You, you see how that fine line of pride and humility that you have to walk. Jesus walked that line, right? That although being in the nature of God, regarding with equality with God, not regarding something to be grasped, but emptied himself by becoming a servant, humbled himself even to the point of death and death on the cross. And he allowed God to exalt him and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to the glory of God the Father. For we are God's, what? Handiwork. We are his masterpiece. Do you consider yourself as a masterpiece? Created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works. In which God prepared an event, events for us to do. And I like this verse in 1 Corinthians 12. I must go on boasting, although there is nothing to be gained. I, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or part of the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man <laughs> like this, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weakness. Now, all of you who have read about Paul, his name was Saul. 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 And what was Saul? He was a Pharisee, a religious man. He thought he knew it all. He thought he was doing the right thing by killing the Christians because of this sect, right? Then he got humbled. Remember the, on the way to Damascus? He got humbled. He got blinded. What does God have to do to get your attention? Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. Or because of these surpassing great revelations, therefore, I, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Now, a lot of scholars think that his thorn in the flesh, or his ailment that he had, he, it was probably that when he got blinded on the road to Damascus, his eyes still bother him. And he, he does say, he, see, this is, I write these words in my own writing, in bold print, because he had to write big because he couldn't see too good. Now, whether that's the case or not, I don't know, but it makes sense. That God would use the very thing that humbled him to be a reminder of who is God. 
because he could easily